Okay, in this video, I'm going to do an example of how to calculate the deadweight loss uh, when you have the monopoly market graph already already drawn out for you. So you plug this into a graphing calculator online, and so the inverse demand function is here. Uh, I've got price equals 300 minus 2Q. Uh, the marginal revenue, which is just the partial derivative of demand, uh, ends up being 300 minus 4Q. And then the marginal cost is just going to be um, an equivalent to 1 per quantity. So we've got a constant marginal cost. So use whatever that is. So let's label our curves here. This is, this is marginal cost. This here is demand. And then this is marginal revenue. Um, first thing to remember, oh, let me price, and then down here we have quantity. First thing to remember is all, all firms really are going to profit maximize, so they're going to produce up until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So we're going to find where that is. Uh, that's right here. So here's marginal cost right up to marginal revenue. Uh, the reason they're not going to keep producing is that it's now going to cost them more uh, to produce than they're actually going to make off of those individual units. So uh, they don't want to do that. So that's going to be um, their, their maximizing output is going to be 60, but they're not going to charge 60. They're going to charge whatever, wherever it hits the demand curve. So follow that up here. Oops, sir. Not very straight. Okay, and this is 180. So profit maximizing price for the monopolist or you know, might, might want to P subscript M, whatever, um, is going to be 180. So this means that there's a loss in this market. If this market was competitive, then uh, these the marginal cost curve really would be the supply curve, and they would produce up and help until it hit the demand curve, but it's, it's not. It's a monopoly. So um, anyway, so the loss here to the consumer surplus is here. Okay. The entire consumer surplus is is this area underneath the demand curve um, which is right up to here so this this is the consumer surplus this is uh, loss to consumers and then this here is the loss to producer surplus okay um, and the monopolist is going to go ahead and, and take over uh, this area here. I haven't drawn the average total cost curve. That's how you would find profit. I'm just trying to show you how to calculate the loss to uh, the consumer and producer surplus. And when we do deadweight loss, it's going to be the consumer surplus plus the producer surplus. So let's find out what that is. Um, so it's just these, the area of these two triangles. So the, the formula for that is one half uh, base times height, or you can think about it one half uh, the loss in quantity times the loss in either the reservation price or the price on the um, on the seller. So for the consumer side, it's going to be uh, loss to consumer surplus. It's going to be one half. You could write it 0.5. Uh, the difference between 180, so that's going to be, I guess this is the height, so um, that's going to be 80. And then the base of this thing is 60 to 100, so it's 40. So 40 times 80 is going to be 3,200, and then we take half of that. Um, and so half of 3,200 is 1,600. So this is the loss to the consumer surplus. Loss to producer surplus in this market, going to be one half, and now it's this triangle here, so uh, it's going to be pretty similar. Um, so one half of the, the base is going to be, uh, again, 40 times 40, so this time I've got 1600 and then half of that is 800. I'm going to add both of those together to get the dead weight loss, and I've got 2400, which is the area of both of these triangles added together. Okay, so that's how to that's how to find the loss to consumer surplus and producer surplus, which which economists are definitely going to call deadweight loss. There's an example there.